So the United States is outraged at the recent OPEC plus oil production cuts and President Biden has vowed to punish Saudi Arabia for it. Will America strike back? Now, this is a really disturbing conversation that we need to have because the financial consequences can be disastrous. And the aim is definitely to get OPEC to reverse their cuts. But just like the recent Russian sanctions, things have a tendency to backfire. And according to Joe Biden, the Saudis will face consequences. He stated, when the White House and Senate gets back, there's going to be some consequences for what they have done with Russia. He didn't say what the measures are going to be, but there are lawmakers on Capitol Hill calling for the US to pull away support for the kingdom. We have Bernie Sanders saying Saudi Arabia is siding with Russia to damage the US economy and American support for them should end. And there have been calls to cut away weapon sales to the Saudis and put away American troops from their bases. And this is basically a move to leave Saudi Arabia more vulnerable in a rather hostile region. But what I want to talk about today is the economic strategies that the US is thinking of employing on the Kingdom and OPEC, and more importantly, if they will work. Because there's a good chance that the US will take some action, right? And it very well could be one of the three that we are going to cover. We have to remember that the US midterm elections are coming in November and the OPEC cuts are extremely bad optics for President Biden. Energy prices will stay elevated, inflation is sky high and his trip in July to meet the Saudi Crown Prince MBS was a complete waste of time. In fact, many people are calling it a humiliation. But the can of worms this opens up is the question of the petrol dollar. Will Saudi Arabia one day price their oil in another currency besides the US dollar? Will they diversify towards the Euro, Chinese Yuan or even the Russian ruble? And this situation goes deeper than just the price of oil. The production cuts have shown that US-Saudi relations are perhaps not as strong as it seems. Now, the first strategy of the United States is the no pack bill. Yes, you heard it right. The R counter to OPEC plus is no pack, which stands for No Oil Producing and Exporting Cartels Bill. And if this bill is passed, it could open members of the OPEC plus group that includes Saudi Arabia to antitrust laws. Basically, the US wants to revoke the sovereign immunity that protects OPEC plus members and their national oil companies from lawsuits in federal court. Taking a look at the bill, the definitions are extremely broad. It includes limiting the production or distribution of oil and setting or maintaining the price of oil. And if those actions have a substantial effect on American oil, gas or petroleum such as the price, it could be considered illegal. Now the part that's up in the air is what those punishments will be and whether it's even possible to sue a sovereign country in federal court. How would it even work? Now if OPEC is found guilty by the US of antitrust and oil manipulation, will the punishment be a fine on the national oil companies or will they do the unthinkable and impose sanctions on the guilty parties? Will assets be frozen? And the big worry is that this action could very well backfire when it comes to the United States status as a safe haven for money and investments, right? Other countries are watching this carefully because the whole world has a lot of money tied up in US treasuries. We can see that countries like China holds $970 billion of US debt, while Saudi Arabia has $121 billion worth of treasuries. If the NOPEC bill passes, Will these countries slowly deleverage their bond holdings just in case? We don't know. Because if they do dump their treasuries, this will cause bond yields to spike even higher and create a deeper recession in the United States. If the bill passes and is enforced, there are unforeseen consequences that could boomerang back to the United States. Back in 2019, Saudi Arabia themselves mentioned that they might sell their oil in currencies other than the dollar if the US passes the no pack bill. And if the Saudis follow through, it could spell the start of the end for the petrol dollar. Now the next option Biden has is draining America's strategic petroleum reserves or the SPR. Now the SPR is America's energy lifeline. It is basically oil stockpiles that should be used only in an emergency. And because of the OPEC plus cuts, Biden is considering releasing even more of the oil reserves to push down the price. Now the SPR reserves are vast. The United States had over 700 million barrels stockpiled at its peak, but since May, Biden is drawing down 180 million barrels into November. And this has caused the SPR to 
to fall all the way down to 416 million barrels. That's dangerously near the 1984 lows. But the big problem is that it won't be nearly enough. Now let's recall that the OPI oil cart was up to 2 million barrels a day. And let's just use the full amount for argument's sake. If Biden sells another 100 million from the strategic reserves, it can only offset 50 days of the production cuts. So the upcoming SPR sale of 10 million barrels in November will only account for 5 days of the OPEC cuts. Relying just on the SPR to counter Saudi Arabia isn't a financially sound idea as well. They can outlast your reserves. And the oil sales from the SPR will be done in the international markets, right? They have to sell it competitively for the best price. And that means the oil could end up in the stockpiles of China through their US subsidiary companies. And we mustn't forget, eventually the oil will also need to be topped up. And because OPEC cuts can outlast the oil reserves, America will need to pay more to fill back the SPR. At best, the SPR sales won't move the needle by much. And at worst, it will cost the US a ton of money to replenish the oil. Now, the third option is a really questionable one. And that is the United States making friends with Venezuela for oil. Now, right now, Biden seems to be warming up relations with the country and he might be looking to lift the sanctions on them. This will mean releasing hundreds of millions of dollars in Venezuelan state funds. They will be able to use the money that was previously frozen. Now, of course, there will be terms and conditions attached to these, such as running free elections to restore democracy in a country. But make no mistake, guys, a big part of this is to resume the exports of Venezuelan oil to flood the markets with supply to bring the price down. However, this won't be enough to make a dent in the OPEC cuts as well. Because of the previous sanctions in 2017, Venezuela was selling their oil outside of the US dollar. And this is a much smaller market and that affected their production. And we can see that before the sanctions, Venezuela was producing nearly 3 million barrels a day. But it has dropped to just under 700,000 barrels a day today. And that's a far cry from the past. Even if the US lifts all the sanctions tomorrow, it will take time for oil production to ramp up again. So America's plan with Venezuelan oil might help ease the price, but its effect will be very limited. It's not even a third of the OPEC production cuts today. So here's the reality. The United States doesn't have many good options when it comes to countering OPEC. Remember, OPEC accounts for 40% of the world's crude production and 60% of global oil exports. That's a lot of oil and it can swing markets much faster and much harder than any single country. Even Russia's production is dwarfed by the size of the entire OPEC. Now, if the US decides to sell their SPRs or work with Venezuela, that might help ease oil prices to a certain degree, right? To a small degree. There won't be much pushback from OPEC or the rest of the world because those are so-called neutral solutions. But the big worry is if the NOPEC bill is passed, that will open a whole can of worms that could evolve into a monstrous situation. And here's the list of the most obvious pushbacks that could happen. Number one, Saudi Arabia could really align itself closer with Russia. The thing about pulling out US troops is that it leaves a security gap, a vacuum that needs to be filled. And guess what? The Saudis are rich. They have tons of money, they have tons of oil. So it is not impossible for them to rely on Russia or even China for security. Even Bernie Sanders has pointed that out in his tweet saying, if Saudi Arabia wants to partner with Russia to jack up US gas prices, it can get Putin to defend its monarchy. Be careful what you wish for, right? Because if somehow Russia and OPEC comes together, they now control over 70% of the world's oil exports. And number two, OPEC could continue cutting oil supply and squeezing the market even further. We could enter to another economic war or commodity war but this time, winter is coming for Europe and the United States will have to choose. Do they stockpile their own fuel as reserves or do they help Europe with exports? We have the US Energy Secretary telling local US refiners not to increase fuel exports. She specifically said, given the historic levels of US refined product exports, I again urge you to focus in the near term on building inventories in the United States rather than selling down current stocks and further increasing exports. Now, this could leave the US with a very tough choice. Look after themselves or help Europe out. And number three, Saudi Arabia could de-dollarize in all sorts of ways. 
they could start selling off their US treasuries to spike bond yields in America. They might simply not roll over their future dollar sales into US debt but buy gold instead. However, the scariest prospect is if Saudi Arabia decides to start selling oil in other currencies. Maybe it's the euro, maybe it's the Chinese yuan, it really doesn't matter. Just the act alone will create cracks in the petrol dollar system and could be the start of the end for the world reserve currencies. Other countries will start to hold more euros or yuan because now they can use those currencies to buy oil from Saudi Arabia or OPEC and the dollar's use will naturally decline. It is already below 60% of global forex reserves and will decline further if the Saudis diversify their oil sales to other currencies. So the United States is facing an energy crisis that's getting worse. Prices are going up, the stockpiles are coming down, and winter is arriving very soon. Europe is crying out for oil, but will America answer the call? We have the White House considering a controversial export ban on gasoline to protect their own energy needs and fight inflation. This might help the United States quite a bit, but it could leave Europe to freeze during winter, so it's a difficult choice. We are beginning to see a breakdown in globalization and it's becoming every country for itself. And the only way to fight back without punishing the Saudis or OPEC is to release American energy. They have to pump more oil and increase their influence in the physical oil markets. OPEC has already shown that they will defend the oil price if the Fed does demand destruction by hiking interest rates, right? OPEC will simply cut production down and supply less oil. And when it comes to commodities, the physical will always win. You cannot burn interest rates to keep warm. You need to burn oil. And sure, unleashing American energy won't be an instant cure. It will take time and there's no escaping this recession. It has already happened. But this will help bring the recession to an early end and eventually bring oil prices down over time. And that's why America's options to punish Saudi Arabia are truly limited. There will be consequences either way and the worst case scenario is triggering the downfall of the petrodollar system. So let me know what you think. What actions will the United States take on Saudi Arabia? Will they even consider the no pack bill? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.